Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm here today to give you an overview of the last 10 years of my art practice. I thought this would be a really rewarding exercise for myself to go through to kind of articulate how my art has evolved over the last 10 years. And mainly I'm doing that because 10 years ago I made the first piece that I feel launched me into my professional artist career as opposed to keeping me in a kind of hobby level. And so that's where I'm coming from today, um, looking back and just talking you through that. So I chose one piece per year. Some years that was harder than others. Some years I didn't have a lot to choose from. And I'll talk to you about that and why that is as we go through them. So the first piece I wanted to discuss is called Dark Blossom and it was created in 2010. I'll also put up the details of size and um, stuff like that there. So 2010 was three years into motherhood for me and motherhood was a huge catalyst into making myself become a professional artist. Prior to 2010, I had been making art quilts, but I was definitely not in any way uh, feeling that I had a direction that was mine, that my voice was clear, that I had any sort of idea of what I really wanted to make work about. In 2010, I was um, going to be getting pregnant with my second child and uh, was had a three year, uh, an almost three year old, a two and a half year old when I made Dark Blossom. And what I was able to do with this piece was really make it for its own sake. So I wasn't making, I wasn't so, I wasn't sewing things that I was using functionally because then up until then, that's really what I'd been doing. I'd been making things for our family, making happy birthday banners and picnic blankets and things that we could use um, as a family. And Dark Blossom was where I really had an idea um, and followed through in making something purely for art's sake. And so it is a blossom of a flower, obviously. I did some embellishing on it with beads, which was not something that I continued very far into my art. Um, I found that the beads just didn't represent what I was wanting to continue doing. But at the time, making it uh, the way I did was exactly what I was hoping and exactly accomplished what I was looking for. So this piece was named, uh, the name kind of came to me um, in a vision. It, it really does represent who I felt I was at that time and basically through a flower. And um, it was, like I said, really important to the moment uh, that I made it and the fact that I made it kind of launched me into an area that I felt was pushing further into creating a professional art career. For 2011, I've chosen a sketch and I did this because if you are a new artist, if you're an emerging artist, if you're a student artist, even if you are, you know, someone who's been making art for a long time, I think we all go through periods of our lives where we're very pro prolific and periods where uh, things are just not happening. And 2011 was one of those years for me. I gave birth to my second son in March of 2011. And this sketch uh, was done while I was pregnant um, in February. And the reason I wanted to show it is because you can see the lines that my older son Kyan made on the paper. I was sketching something out, an idea that came to me, something inspired by being pregnant at the time and feeling like a little, like my little chicks were going to come along, my little baby bird was going to be born. And um, I wanted to show that, you know, this was still me, you know, trying to assert this part of my identity, which was being a professional artist, but not really having the time or the energy to create work around it. And so the ideas were still coming, the intention was still there, but the execution couldn't happen yet. And so that's what 2011 
means to me in terms of making art is that I had made this piece in 2010. I knew the intention was there. I knew the feelings were coming and I just kept recording the ideas and waiting for that moment where I could actually make the piece. So once my son was born, I um, was able to feel like my family was complete. And that feeling was able to propel me into really establishing myself as a professional artist. And I wanted to do that because as much as I identified at the time and still do as being a mother, I also want my own thing. So the thing that is just Jenny, that is not Jenny the mom, Jenny the wife, Jenny the daughter, anything. I, I'm no one else. I'm just Jenny the artist and that's my own identity that I hold dear. And so once my um, second son was born, I felt I was done with the process of getting pregnant, having baby, breastfeeding, all these things that are very time consuming. And for me, um, my whole life had been a really important goal. And so though I felt like those goals were accomplished, that part of my life had been set up, the foundation had been created, and now I could go off in a different direction and create and and really focus in on that part of myself. Now, did I have a ton of time for that? No, but I still used the extra time that I could find, that I could make for myself to create. So um, in 2012, I uh, entered my first show that I consider to be embarking on my professional career. Um, it was a show for emerging artists. I uh, had a piece in mind that uh, reflected the theme of the show, which was Earth. And I had a photograph that I had taken. I uh, played around with it a little bit in Photoshop, and then I had it digitally printed onto fabric, which was then shipped to me from a company, uh, Spoonflower was the company that I used at the time. And then I stitched that piece. Um, it was finished, um, I believe, around mid-November. And they entered the show. And I got into the show. And um, so I started off 2013 with this piece in the show. And this piece sold. So it was a really great experience overall. It was very um, encouraging to have that happen the first time. But I also felt like it was setting me up for kind of a <laughs> difficult follow-up. Because getting in and then having your piece sell is like the ultimate thing. Um, but then that's not going to happen every show. And so, um, it was a really important step, but again, it's interesting to me because the, the style that I used here of printing a photo onto fabric and stitching it is not something that I've continued really doing. I've done it a little bit in a few pieces here and there, but, uh, I have never done it to the extent that I did with this one. It was just something that felt right at the time. And to be honest, it was probably something that was really manageable at the time for me um, because I didn't have to fin finick with um, applique and cutting up things and sewing them back together the way I do now. I just had the time to leave it as a whole, pe whole cloth piece. 2013 saw the manifestation of the sketch that I showed you from 2011. So I was able to create um, Spring in the World Tree, and it doesn't look exactly like the sketch does, but it definitely evokes that time. And that piece was important to me because it really showed, it, it made me feel that I could take something that had was an idea that I'd had previously and manifest it now and that I didn't need to feel like it always had to be new and fresh from now that those ideas are still valid they're still important I used a lot of different techniques in this piece I used photo transfer I used painting I used hand stitch I used applique this is really an exploration of combining things and it's really where that mixed media feeling started emerging. That was a really important step for me because being able to combine all these different media, being able to feel like I've got them there, they are um, 
they are at my disposal and I can put them together the way it feels right to me was important. And um, it also began a series. So these pieces ended up being four pieces that I worked on um, later on, creating one for each season. And so it was a mini grouping that I uh, eventually worked on a little bit each year and accomplished at that time. 2014 was a, a really interesting year because I was able to create a piece on commission. And this was the first time that I had applied to a proposal uh, for ideas and then submitted it to a gallery. It's a very, um, it's a, actually a community center in downtown Vancouver and they have a glass display case in the front, in their front lobby area where they invite artists to create proposals for display. And so this piece, Lifelines, was created specifically for this location and this case and I made it um, to kind of speak to city dwellers. I wanted to talk to them about the isolation that people can feel even though they live in a city filled with people. Uh, I wanted to talk about the environment. Um, I wanted to talk about what we can do to connect to each other and so I created these buildings um, and the windows and there's some people looking out and out of their windows are hanging these little clotheslines and they're connecting to other people and it's just talk about isolation and talk about what we do what we can do to connect and what we can um, do to think about the past and how some things are even though we left them behind because they seem antiquated, something as simple as hanging your clothes on a clothesline can really make a huge difference in the long run for the environment and for um, connecting. And it also brings things alive. I just love looking, being in a city or being in a village and seeing clothes hanging on a clothesline, um, the way they can sometimes hang across streets and you look up at them from below. I just love that imagery. I think it's really beautiful. And so this piece was all about that. So it was a really great experience to um, receive a yes, create the piece under a time constraint, hang the piece and just have that whole experience of something created specifically for um, a specific location. 2015, I responded to an artist call for a show um, that was celebrating Joni Mitchell, who is a singer songwriter. Uh, that I really, really admire and love. And I had previously in art school created a uh, series of pieces based on, the sh on a song of hers called Black Crow. This is uh, a song from her album, Hygiera. It is a very visual song to me. There's so much imagery in it. And I'd always wanted to create an art piece around it. And so when I saw this Joni Mitchell show happening at a public gallery, I decided to uh, make a piece about it. This piece uh, was illustrating the song. It was the largest piece I'd made to date, besides Lifelines being large in terms of an installation, but Black Crow was um, a larger single piece. I used all the things, so embroidery, um, hand quilting, uh, applique, uh, photo transfer, all those things are used in this piece. And the reason that I chose this piece for 2015 is because it really propelled a whole series of work. So at the time that I was making it, I had no idea that I would be creating a whole series about crows. And when this piece went out there, when people started seeing it, I uh, received a message from a friend of mine who's my neighbor and also uh, is an artist and she makes ceramics and she makes ceramic crows and she thought hey we should you should make more work like this and then we could apply for some shows and do them together and so i you know this was a whole new area for me trying to create a larger body of work um, all around a theme and to apply for shows with someone else and to just push myself to create this you know, bigger body of work. And so um, it really was a very successful endeavor because I've created um, about 10 pieces all around this theme. I did a lot of research, ended up reading some great books about crows. And um, 
I learned a lot about myself, about the application process for exhibitions. And um, now I have a really nice little body of work that surrounds this um, topic. And so uh, I feel like that piece was pretty instrumental for me in a lot of ways in um, creating, learning and evolving as an artist. And that piece is now in the collection of a very wonderful friend of mine, a mentor that I had when I was young in, in college. And we did an exchange. So I got a piece of his and he took that piece and it hangs in his home. 2016, I received another commission. This one was for set sale. And this piece was a very emotional piece for me to make and it taught me a lot about timelines. So we were told that we could create this piece in about a six week window. From the time we submitted our proposals to the time we were told whether it was a yes or no, we had six weeks to, sorry, from the time we were told it was a yes or no, we had six weeks to complete the piece. Making a textile piece of this size in six weeks uh, was a feat that I am still amazed that I accomplished. I was not working at that time. I was not doing a part-time job. So the old job that I was doing was at home with my kids. And I sewed every single day with as much devoting as much time as I could to getting that piece done. And uh, this piece actually hangs today in a hospice and um, hopefully brings comfort to people who are in their last days. And so the cause of this piece, the, the um, place it holds in people's hearts, I hope, and in my heart is a place that it was a labor of love for, um, for, for someone who is going, needs comfort. And so I'm so, so, so glad that I was able to create this piece and that it's hanging in, in a hospice now. But I knew, I knew after that, that the size of the piece, because all the pieces were the same size, um, was something that for me to accomplish in six weeks is um, pretty much impossible at this stage because right now I'm working part-time. So I would have even less time to work on it. So I know now it, it was really helpful in giving me a timeline for how long it takes me to make work and for what type of a piece I can create quickly and what type of a piece takes much more time. 2017 um, was a year of continuing on with my crow work. So I picked to show you from that year, Grass House. And this was another piece that I felt uh, kind of, it took me in another direction. It's an area where I still feel that I can uh, do more and make more work along this line. Um, this is based on a Native American dwelling that was created from grasses in the Midwest of the United States. And I was contrasting this with another piece. So that piece was called Crow's Nest. I no longer have that piece. It's sold this year in 2019, but the two pieces were kind of meant to speak to each other and, and be together. And, um, so it was, again, this, this, this pushing, this, this exploring things relating to crows and humans and relating us to each other. Uh, and, uh, the methods that I used with this, how I created this piece was very different for me. And, um, so again, it's just pushing the envelope of the techniques I was using and pushing my own visual language that I am trying to create and do for myself. For 2018, I wanted to share a viewpoint with you today. Uh, viewpoint is one of the two pieces that I made in 2018. And I'll talk a little bit about the amount and the numbers in a few minutes once I've gotten through kind of the overview of these pieces. But um, viewpoint pushed me. I uh, wanted something specific. And this is based on a, a photograph that I took uh, on Salt Spring Island in Ruckel Park, which is a beautiful provincial park. 
and um, I was looking for a certain look, I was looking for a certain feel, and I feel like I accomplished that. It also took me out of a uh, rectangle or square format and brought me into trying out some different shapes, uh, which I, uh, was, I enjoyed doing. And this piece uh, was, again, large and pushed the boundaries of what I felt like I could manage at the time. So um, I think any time I'm pushing any of the boundaries that, that have been kind of the regular things on my pieces before, I'm really glad and I feel like those pieces push me a little further. 2019, I picked transmutation to share with you today and that's because this piece actually was something I was working on for two years. I struggled with this piece. I could not figure out how to make it work. I had it in three panels for a very, very long time. I cut it all up, got it all edged, decided that I had to sew it back together because that's the way it needed to look. Um, this is the title piece for the work to me. This whole series is called Transmutation. Um, I felt like this piece pushed so many boundaries that I had created for myself and allowed me to um, make mistakes and then fix them. And so I don't know, I don't, I still don't even know if the piece is resolved to the point where I feel completely satisfied. And I feel like if you're an artist, you understand that. I mean, there's many pieces that you stop working on because you need to stop, but they're not necessarily resolved to the way you want them to be. But what this piece represents to me is uh, perseverance and also just letting yourself figure it out on the wall, letting yourself keep working until it gets where it needs to go. And um, that was, you know, advice that my mentor friend who I did the exchange with, with Black Crow, he, you know, he, he sends me letters and talks about different parts of art and one of those things is that you know don't rush the pieces let them have their time and I, and then I had the luxury of doing that with this piece as well it wasn't something that I had to rush it wasn't something that I had to finish for any deadline so I really let it become and be what it needed to be in the moment so before I talk about 2020 and where I feel like my art is going in this year I just wanted to talk a little bit about the numbers because a lot of people ask me how long it takes to make things uh, because this is very labor-intensive work and um, I just want to put into a little bit of context how much how the years can change in terms of your ability to devote time to making your art and just show you that I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. I don't think it's great that it takes, they can take such a long time and that some years are really slow, but it's just, I think in the natural cycle and in the 10 years that I've been doing this, um, I, it's changed a lot. So I'll just give you a, an example over um, five years and show you there. So in 2015, I made four pieces. In 2016, I made 12 pieces. And that is my most prolific year thus far. Now, I will say that a lot of those 12 pieces were smaller. So I made um, eight pieces that are 12 by 12. So those are quite tiny. And, um, you know, I can produce those much quicker, obviously, because they're smaller. Um, in 2017, I made six pieces. And then in 2018, I only made two. And the reason that my production went down so much is because I made a volunteer commitment to an organization that I believed in and my extra time really became occupied by, um, those, volu by those volunteer hours and the tasks that I had to do within that. And so it really took down my creativity time, uh, my production time. I also changed jobs in 2018. So I went from working once a week at a part-time job to working about three to four days a week. And so again, it's just more time that I was not devoting to my art, more time that I was, but I was earning an income. And that's the thing that I was able to justify it with is that I don't feel pressure at this stage to sell my work to make money. 
I make my money at my job and then I make my art and I make whatever art I want, feeling no pressure to make money from it because I'm already bringing in an income. So that is something that, that is a, uh, is a situation that gave me a lot of comfort and gave me a lot of freedom in my art making. And I know that every artist has to make a decision for themselves, but I don't want to ever be making something just to make money from it. I want to believe in what I'm making. I want to be able to follow through with my ideas. And that's really important to me. So in 2019, I made five pieces. Um, and some of those, like I said, transmutation had been on the go for two years and I actually just got it finished in 2019. Uh, a lot of these pieces um, you can see in various uh, art blogs that I've created uh, throughout the last year. So if you're interested in looking at any of these pieces, I know um, Viewpoint and Transmutation, I did vlogs on both of those pieces. Please go to my um, art videos playlist and you will be able to find all those vlogs in that playlist. I will link it in the description box below. So where is my work going for 2020? Um, I feel really excited about where my work is headed. I am in the middle of creating a series at this time. I have three completed pieces in the series. I am in the midst of creating two right now, and I have uh, one to two more that uh, will be added into this group. My goal, my artistic goal for 2020 is to get this series as close to finished as possible. Um, because there's always more work coming, there's always more ideas. I have a very large series that I've been developing for at least 10 years that is still in development. I have not started working on any of those pieces. And these pieces need to be finished before I can begin those. I want to get this little series of work done. Um, and then I feel like I can really expand out and get into the nitty gritty of creating this, this large show that I've been thinking about for literally years. And that's kind of how the ball bounces. So, um, where my work is going, I'm still doing mostly, um, mixed media. So that's where it's going. There's paint, there's stitch, there's different textures of different types of threads and cottons in there. Um, and there's also been an element that I didn't talk about here very much, which is my interest in creating work around social justice issues. And I have contributed to larger projects in these um, periods of time. And I didn't really count those in the numbers here because they are not really just my projects. They're not things that I control from the beginning to the end. They're things that I've contributed to. And I've also made some videos, um, some of my art blogs, vlogs about those pieces as well. And those are really about social um, activism, about creating work that is um, contributing to making the world a better place. And I really feel like those are important parts of my work, but um, they also, you know, they also, um, don't feel like completely mine. They feel like collaborations. And I also, of course, in, in 2017 to 2018, did a huge artist in residence project, which um, I have made a video about as well uh, in my art vlogs. You can find it there. And um, that also took up a lot of time. So I did make four pieces with the kids of a whole school that year. But those, again, don't feel like just mine. Those pieces are for everybody. Those are collaborative and I coordinated them, but they, they, I don't own them. So, um, that's kind of the differentiation I make there. And, um, yeah, so I don't foresee any big collaborations happening in the next year for sure. Um, I think potentially in 2021, I will begin the process of um, cons consultation and potentially coming back into the school that I was in with my older son and with my younger son. We will make a quilt um, for a fundraiser for the school again. That went really well. And um, there's a lot on the horizon. There's lots of opportunities that come up and I like to be ready for them and be pushing. And so um, I'm going to be applying for shows with my crow work um, that I completed uh, last year and trying to get those into some solo shows. And I'm going to also be creating um, some proposals once I get this second group of work done. And there's a lot going on. It's really busy. 
Um, but I do feel like um, I've come to a place now after these last 10 years where I can really feel that I've established who I want to be as a professional artist and I don't feel like I'm searching as much as I was before. And there's always kind of a sense that you don't really know what you're doing, I think. Um, I don't know, maybe other artists don't feel that way, but I feel that way often. But I feel like every day I become more certain about who I am and what I'm making and where I'd like to take it in the future. So thanks so much for watching. Please let me know down below if um, any comments you have. I'd be interested to hear uh, what you think about the work or if you're an artist yourself, um, how you feel the last 10 years has affected you, um, whether you're a writer or a painter or a sculptor, any anything that you work on, how it's kind of how your work has evolved in the last 10 years. I'd be really interested to hear that. And I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching.